Greetings folks, today I'm going to be showing you how I use Microsoft's OneNote as an RPG campaign management tool. If you're new to the channel, welcome, I'm Anto and I've been running a homebrew Pathfinder campaign for 40 plus sessions now. And I recently switched over from using a variety of Google Docs, spreadsheets, handwritten notes and everything everywhere to using Microsoft's OneNote. I recently posted a picture of one of my campaign screens to Reddit and a lot of people really enjoyed it and wanted to see more. So I'm making a video tutorial for you all to show you how I use OneNote. So let's head over to the computer and get started. The first thing that you want to do is download and install OneNote. Be warned though, there are a lot of different versions of this program and over the course of the last week, I've had a lot of people say to me, your version looks much cleaner than mine. I can't find X, Y, and Z button. The reason for that is because there are various different versions. Now, the version I'm gonna be using is free to download from the Microsoft website or from the Windows Store. So all you need to do is head to onenote.com slash download. I'll leave a link in the description. And instead of here where it says open OneNote, because I've already got the program, it'll say download. Click that, download it, run the exe. And when OneNote, when OneNote launches, you'll be presented with something that looks a little bit like this. I've already done a little bit of setup. So here where it says there aren't any sections here, create a section, start taking notes. The first time you load that, it'll just tell you to click there to start taking notes. You click it and you'll see it creates a few things up here. Which brings us to the first thing you need to know about OneNote, the navigation. So OneNote divides its navigation into two tiers. You have sections and you have pages. You can have multiple notebooks, but within each book, there's only these two layers of navigation, a section and a page. And for some people, that's gonna be off button because they like to really nest all of their information, but I prefer it like this so I don't have to scroll through as many things to find what I'm looking for. So, what I like to do when I'm starting is start with my players. So we'll call this section the players, and then we're gonna start out by making a single character, and then we'll duplicate that template for each additional character. If you have one of the other versions of Notebook, either via the Office programs or Office 365, or using it on the web or on mobile, all of those are gonna look slightly or not so slightly different to this version. So if you wanna follow along and you wanna use Notebook in the way I use Notebook, this is the version you wanna do it in because you'll be able to find everything that I'm showing you much easier. So once we've got a section created and a page, the first thing I like to do is turn on page previews. To do this, right click anywhere on a page in the navigation pane. And down at the bottom here, you'll see navigation panes. Click on that and make sure show page previews is ticked. Now what this does is it will, if you write something up here, let's say Bader for one of my characters, you'll see that it turns the first thing you write up here into the title for the page. And then the very next thing you write is gonna be picked up as the subtitle. So beta is a knight. And you'll see that it will pick that up and he will be called a knight in the page preview. Just gonna delete that for a moment so that I can show you how I set everything up. So what I like to do for my character pages is I will start and I will fully complete one character's page and then I duplicate that page to create additional characters. So we're gonna use Baydar as an example. He is the Dragonborn Knight that one of my players is running in the campaign at the moment. So the first thing that I wanna do is I wanna put a picture of Baydar in on the page. And to do that, I go over to Insert, Pictures from File, and then you see I've already got the path for my player pictures selected. So I just click on Baydar and then you'll see that it's immediately dragged that very first image from the page and put it as the preview for this particular page. I'll just resize Beda a little bit there, like that, and maybe move him up ever so slightly like that. To 
move elements on the page you just want to click them and then you'll see this border that comes around them with the three dots at the top hover over it and then you can move it as you like now the next thing i want to do is i want to start adding some of his character information and to do that i'm going to be using tables so back over to insert table and what i want to do first is add the key information for his character so we're going to go seven across and two deep. And then you'll see this brings in the table. What we're going to do here is we're going to start by writing his class. And straight away you'll see, because this is the first text on the page, the page previews picked that up and it's put it down as a subheading on the page. So now at a glance, I know beta is a knight. And underneath that, I'll just write class. And then we'll put his race and then let's say his level his alignment his age his height and his weight and then we'll stick another column in there for his for how many kills he's had during the campaign so to do that we'll go over to table and then insert right and I know he's had 57 kills. So we'll just fill in these subheadings level, alignment, age, height, weight, and kills. And to format this in a way that makes it really easy to read, what I want to do is I want to make the, the headline information bigger. So I go back over to home after selecting it all. I'm going to change the size to 20 and make those bold. And then I'm going to reduce the size of these subheadings a little bit down to 10. And then I can drag that in. So at a glance, I can look and see, right, he's a knight, he's a dragonborn, he's level 9, chaotic, good alignment, his age, his height, his weight, and how many kills he's had in the campaign. The next thing we want to do is we want to add in his core stats. I've gone through a couple of different variations of doing this and now the way I've found to do it easiest is to insert a table, max it out and we will add some more columns as and when we need. But insert a table and then start with strength dexterity that's, that's not how you spell dexterity uh, Intelligence. Miss the uh, double L there. Wisdom and charisma. Forgive the uh, frequent typos. I'm using a new keyboard. And once we've done that, I want to know what his saves are going to be. So back over to table and we'll insert a few columns below. And I want to know fortitude, reflex, and will save. And then I also want to know his HP. And then I'll fill these in, this next column in with his figures. But the next thing I want to do is I want to know his AC, I want to know his flat-footed AC, his touch AC and his combat maneuver defense. Then I want to know his base attack bonus, his melee attack bonus, his ranged attack bonus and his combat maneuver bonus and then Another thing that I like to see right at a glance, Pathfinder, I want to know his initiative and perception. Next I'm going to input his skills and I will do this in three separate columns. So start with acrobatics, appraise, and I'll go down and fill all these in and we'll come back once that's done. Okay, so I've added in the skills. You see I've left a load of the knowledge is blank because you don't need to know all those things right now. But I've added in the skills and then all I do 
now is add another column to the right and add languages known and then now we know as common celestial draconic and under common Okay, so you can see here that this isn't the prettiest of things. So what I'll do is stretch it out so that it is a little tidier. And then we'll go in and we'll add some of this information here. Now, when I am doing the abilities, I like to also put in the bonus in brackets. Just so that if I'm running the game and I need to know the bonus, I don't have to do any working out, I can look and immediately know what they are. Okay, so you can see here I've finished adding all the information and I've made all of the headers bold. What I like to do now is go into this top section and just spread that information a little bit. make it so that the top row of information matches this bottom row. It doesn't have to be perfect. Do it like that and then I move that up. You can see there all the key stats that you would need right at hand all the ability modifiers, any ACs, all the skills, any languages, all in one nice and easy to, di to digest area. I don't like adding fancy backgrounds and borders and other elements to my player pages because I like to be able to click on them and immediately see what I need. I don't want any noise on the page that stops that which is why I keep it to a white background. Another thing I like to do for my players is if I bring up their character sheets, I like to add in some information about my player characters. Before my campaign started, I sent each of my players a small little questionnaire asking them different information about their characters, what their backgrounds were, what their motivations were, what their fears were, and I had them fill them in before the game started. And I like to use that information to inform how I create campaign narratives. So for some characters, I might bring in their motivations or their fears and weave that into the campaign. So I'll just drag that information in and you can see I've just copied and pasted from Microsoft Word here and then just drag that over to match. So straight away we've got a near completed character page. We've got all their key stats and then all the information that my player has written in right at the start of the campaign about their character. Another thing you could do here underneath this is if you're running a game in person, you might want to put their feats and their special abilities down here and all the information and rules mechanics for those feats and special abilities. I don't do that because I run a virtual game and my virtual tabletop of choice, Fantasy Grounds, has that information inbuilt into it. So I don't need to necessarily see everything about their feats and special abilities on this particular page. The last thing I want to do on this character page is I want to introduce some links. Knight is a third party class. It's not a Paizo first party class. So what I want to do is I want to link the SRD page for Knight straight here. So if I ever want to see how the Knight class progresses, I can just click on it and open that page straight away. So all I want to do is highlight the word I want to link, go over to insert, link, and then the address is going to be the address for the SRD entry for the Knight class. Click insert, and there you can see that I can click on that and it will open up the Knight page on the SRD. So that I can straight away go into Vedar's page if he asks me a question about the Knight class or if I need information about the Knight, 
the night class, I can click on that and it'll open the relevant page without me having to copy all that information into the OneNote, which you could do and which is something I will be doing with the Dragonborn because it is a homebrew race. So to do that, I'm going to go down here to section, click add new section for races. And within there, I'm going to click on Dragonborn. Now, I won't paste in all the information for Dragonborn, but I do want to link this page to my player sheet. To do that, I right click on the page in the navigation bar, and then click down here on copy link to this page. Go back over to the player's character sheet, double click on Dragonborn, and then the same again, insert link, paste that in, and then you can see when I click on that, it takes us to the Dragonborn page. And that is how you navigate within OneNote itself. You right click on the page or the section that you want to link to, copy the link to that page, and then use insert link to find it. Another thing you can do is if you right click on an element of text, you can copy link to paragraph. And I'll show you how that comes in handy later on in the video. Once I'm done with the character page, what I like to do is I will copy it and paste it in. And then I use that pasted page as the template for my next character. So the next character might be Ao, and I know that she is a monk. And I might delete that image and insert a picture. And then size that like that and there we are then I'd go through all this information and change it out for the relevant information for this character and then when I was done I'd copy the page paste it do my next character and so on and so on until all your characters have done I like to keep all of my character sheets, including for characters that have either left the party or have been killed, because I find it useful to have information for what their stats were when they left the party, and just in case anyone wants to play them in a one shot, it's handy to have them on hand. One important thing to keep in mind is to try and avoid putting text elements on top of one another. So if I just click anywhere here, and put in test text. If I drag that over here, it can be really difficult sometimes to select the right text. It's more of a problem if you layer tables over one another, but it's just something to bear in mind. You can end up grabbing the wrong element if you're trying to delete things. So try and avoid putting elements on top of one on top of each other like that. Right, the next thing that we're going to move on to is how I organize my campaign itself. So, a lot of people have asked me how I use OneNote specifically to organize my campaign, how I decide what constitutes its own section, and what is pages within a section, how many pages to make, and things like that. So we'll briefly go over what I do to organize a campaign. So the first thing I want to do is I want a section devoted to the world. And within, within this, I would have a map of the world. So let's go map of Valoroth, which is the name of my homebrew world. And then I'd go insert pictures from file. And I would navigate over to my maps. And I would find the latest image. And I'd drag it in there. And I like to make it nice and big. So straight away, I drag in my map. This map I made using a combination of Photoshop and Serif Page Plus. And I've been updating it as the party has progressed. So you can see this little green dotted line, sort of like the Hobbit and Fellowship of the Ring, is tracking the party's progress across the realm and is also noting a few other important pieces of information, like where characters have died. Uh, one thing that you can do on this map is if you click off it and let's say we'll write the word pin. If I highlight that and go over to home, highlight it yellow, 
and drag that over somewhere. I can then, once I've created a page for, let's say, Sandpoint, um, I can insert a hyperlink on that pin, and when I come to the map, I can look at the map, and if I want to know about Sandpoint, I click on the pin and it will take me there. So I'm going to be showing you the example of West Keep today, so I'm going to move my pin down south, and I'm going to put a pin there, and we'll come back to that pin. Once I've created a map of the world, I'll create another page and Valoroth, and then in this page I put all the pertinent information about the realm. So for me, if I go and get my previous master document, which was a Word document, I can paste in all the information from that Word document. And just resize it a little. So you can see here I've got information on the geography, some brief history of the most notable things that have happened in relation to this campaign. Elsewhere in my OneNote, I might have expansive information on the history of different areas of the campaign. But for this particular page in the world category, I only want the information relevant to my campaign. So my players are dealing with the fallout of the death of the previous king and a current war with the dwarves. So I put that information in there. But they don't need to know what happened 600 years ago halfway across the realm with a king that has no bearing on the current story. I I know what's happened with that, and I will have a section within the world for the kings of Valoroth, and I will list their deeds and specific things that have happened to them. But in this Valoroth main page, I only want information that's really relevant to the current campaign I'm running. Once I've added a little information for the world the next thing i want to do is add some calendars i really like using calendars to track my players progress what they've been doing where they go who they speak to and as much information as i can because i run such a an improvised campaign i find it really difficult to fully remember everything so I need those notes for me to be able to refer back to and say, oh, okay, so on the 4th of June, they went here and spoke to this NPC, and this is what they learned. Because I like to bring threads from weeks and weeks back into current sessions and sprinkle them in. So I'll show you how to do that. We'll create a new section. Rename the section Calendar. And then... All we want to do here is I create a different page within the calendar for each in-game month. Now I have custom in-game months and days, so I'll use one as an example. One of my in-game months is called Nox, and then within that page I'll insert a table, two columns wide. And let's make it a little bit wider. that and what I do in the top left is I will put the current year because it will pick that up as the first text and it will place it as the subheading so I know that this is Knox in the year 1457 and then I'll start and I'll go one two three four five six seven and what I normally do is on the first day I'll write what day it is so I use semi custom days and I use moon day, tower day, wine day, thunder day, fire day, star day and Sunday. I use Sunday as one of the real world days of the week because that helps contextualize all the other days. My players know that Sunday is Sunday so moon day is Monday tower day is Tuesday. So I will go through like that, put the, all the numbers of days of the month and what specific day they are, and then in here I will write notes. Oops, notes. 
bold both of these and I'll center align them to do that. Go back to the home tab, click this little drop down here, center align. So on the first of Knox, my party might visit Ben Vinder the Merchant and Beta might purchase, um, let's say, an Enchanted Axe. These sorts of little information pieces can be really important because with the example of Ven Vinder, in the last session my players played, they found out this character, the specific character Ven Vinder, who they've known for 42 weeks now, 42 sessions, was evil and betrayed them. And as it turns out, the majority of the party are carrying a lot of magic items that they bought from this powerful evil sorcerer. So they might want to know where they bought specific items from, when they purchased those items, when they visited or went to specific places. And it helps me know, oh, I know that Badar has purchased an enchanted axe from Vinda, and now Vinda's evil, maybe there's a curse on that axe. And it just helps me keep track of the world. Um, what I will also do is during a session, so say they are doing a session on the 4th of Nox on the Thunder Day, and they're going into the dungeon, I make fairly brief notes, so go to dungeon. Maybe they fight some bugbears in the first room. Fight five bugbears. Uh, maybe they kill four. One runs. And then maybe they go through a collapsed room filled with water. And there's a giant eel. A giant eel. Uh, they kill the eel. Uh, take its bile sack, we'll say. Because maybe someone's hired them to find some monster parts to use in rituals and spells. And then they work their way through the dungeon to the final room and fight the boss. Uh, maybe Ao goes down and contracts a disease. Uh, no, let's say Ao goes down and is poisoned. And then let's say that it is Grack that delivers the final blow. Final blow to us. These are the kinds of make the kinds of notes I make during a session. They're very rough, um, very little punctuation, very stream of consciousness style. But then after a session, I will go back to these notes in this calendar page, and I will add a bit more flavour to them. So I might, in, where it says go to dungeon, I might embellish that and say the party was hired by the local bar owner George to go to a nearby dungeon and try and bring him back the bile sack of a great eel that is rumoured to live there because the bile has some magical properties that he thinks he can use to make his beer the best in the region or something like that and then I will go through line by line embellish what happened these small nuggets of information help trigger my memory and remind me what happened in the session so I can expand on it when I'm not trying to run the session. Because trying to take a detailed note of what they're doing as they're doing it distracts me from running the game. But doing this, I can keep track of what they've done so it reminds me. I know what the major beats of the session were and then later I can come back and embellish on it. So the next thing I want to show you is how I plan my sessions within OneNote. So, the way I work is each notable new place my players go, I create a new section for. So my players are currently in the city of Westkeep, so I create a section, I call it Westkeep, and then the first thing I do is Westkeep map. If the area doesn't have a map, I obviously won't include it, but I like to add a map if I have one available. 
so that straight away I know where my players are. So let's add the map of Westkeep. And I used a city generator for this and a little bit of Photoshop. I'll link the city generator down in the comments in the description below so that you can use it to generate some custom cities for your games. But I drag in the map and that way I can then use the map. I can put pins on it so that I can link it to specific sections within the Westkeep page. So I know that Westkeep is a city in the barony of Ashford. So that's what I'll post down here. I'll just move that. And I will open up my Westkeep document, the one that I've previously been using in Word, and just paste it. And you can see that all the information I have from that is transferred over. Now, these hyperlinks at the top here currently are from the Word document. But what you can do is you can use the copy linked paragraph that we talked before about and then go up to the relevant parts and do that. And then when I click on that, it will take me to the city. What I like to do for organizing the areas in which my players are in is I'll start with an overview of the area. So this is an overview of the city of Westkeep and then a description of the city itself, who the law is in the city. So if the city has a mayor, if the city has a lord or a nobleman, or if it's run by mercenaries or a pirate queen, that all goes in there. The land, I list any notable uh, features. So this city borders the western wall of the realm uh, of the barony of Ashford, which is entirely encircled with a, a great wall style wall. Um, so if your city has any notable features, say it has a giant crater in the middle or it's on top of a particularly high mountain, those are the sort of things I'll put in the land area. And then I go into the people. And here is where I do things a little bit differently to how some people might like to use this. Some people like to have their NPCs separate from everything else. I prefer to have most of my NPCs listed in the page for the area in which they reside. So in Westkeep, I know that there are going to be a lot of vendors and traders and NPCs. And instead of having multiple NPC pages in a different section, I'd rather just list them all here. Because that way, when my players are running an adventure, in or around Westkeep if they decide oh before we go out we want to buy some potions I know that they're going to go see Mervyn Castrix who's the local alchemist and I have that information in this document. Another thing that I like to do is within these pages for specific areas I like to run my actual adventures so you can see here that I break it down into adventure numbers. My players recently, as of the time of recording, recently did Adventure 42, Death in the Woods. They were hired to go and remove a spirit that was inhabiting a set of woods. And during the course of that battle, two of the players were killed. And one of those players is part angel. And their angel mother appeared, revived them, and as soon as she appeared, another NPC, Ven Vinder, who the party have known for 40-something weeks now, appeared, killed the player's mother, and is revealed to be their evil sorcerer father. It was an intense session, um, really good, but you can see that I have very little planning for what was going on. I run quite an improvised campaign. When I started... Um, GM and I was much more meticulous in the details but as you get a little more familiar with the process you need less and less um, so all I do now is write down the main the broad strokes of the campaign so for this I knew that they 
were going to be contacted by half ear in once they got back to the city from their last campaign it was going to tell them about this spirit in the woods and that it was killing people and that there was it was disrupting the centaurs in the woods because i want to bring the centaurs in into the campaign and i knew that one of the npcs they knew um was going to ask them to go and sort it out i had made a note the of the time it would take them to travel there and some other elements like corpses hanging from the trees and the sense of hopelessness and fear that they get moving through because i wanted that to have a mechanical benefit and then you see here it says eventually they'll come to a gully and a sp and spot the translucent visage of a woman in a dress gliding across the forest floor all this text accounted for maybe 20 30 minutes of the campaign while they were going around getting prepared the majority of that session is between these two lines of text between the point they discover the woman and once they defeat the spirit and i don't really plan any of that i'll build a monster within fantasy, fantasy ground or monsters uh, i'll build the maps and tokens but in terms of actual planning i don't and quite a lot of the time i don't concern myself too much with how balanced the encounters are my players have been playing together now for so long that they are used to working together and they're quite a powerful party they've accumulated a lot of magic items they all rolled really well on their stats so if i just use the recommended uh, combat the challenge rating a lot of the time they'll just wipe the floor with it so i prefer to create interesting encounters that are often on paper impossible and then present them to the players and watch them amaze me by figuring out how they're gonna how they're gonna solve the problems but you'll see within this planning there is there's no written dialogue i don't plan out line for line what npcs are going to say because that's just not my style i run through it improv but if you wanted to you could so let's say you wanted to say the party visit the alchemist Mervyn. If you wanted to put a scripted bit of dialogue in, a really good way to do it is to separate that out visually. And you can either use a different color or quite a fun little thing you can do is use shape. So you might drag in a shape and then, so you just click inside your created shape and start typing. So Mervyn might say, greetings friends, what can I? for you today and then what I'll do is I'll resize my circle select both Ooh. select both and move them there and that way as I'm scrolling through I see that the party visit the alchemist moving castrix and immediately I know that this line of text is dialogue and I can't get it confused. Or similarly, I could move that down and type it out again. I can go over and give this a color so i might want to give it a blue for dialogue the color doesn't really matter all that matters is that i'm separating out that line of text from the body so that i know when i'm going through it what is dialogue and what isn't but like i said that's not how i run my campaigns but if you prefer to mark down all your dialogue that is there's two ways to do it you can either change the color of the text or the background of the text or you can put them in little shout out boxes another thing you can do within this section is if you wanted to hear where the party are visiting moving castrix let's say you want to put in a picture of him so that you remember what he looks like so you can describe it to your party 
Well, that's easy enough to do. You just go in there to insert. Find the picture and pop it in. Resize it to how you like. And then as you're scrolling through, you know that the party visit the Archimist Mervyn Castrix. And there's his description. You can describe him to your party. It saves you having to think on the fly as to what these characters look like. Remember them. You can just look at the image, you can describe them to them, or you can just show your players the image. Another thing you can do is add music to help elevate the ambience of your games. So, for example, if the party had just gone into Mervyn Castrix's Alchemist, I might want to play a specific track. To do that, I'd go to Insert and File, Insert as Attachment, and then I'd navigate to where I've kept the music. So I'd go to a music folder and then choose a piece of music. And it will load that in. And if you right click on it, you can start playing it. And you can hear. It will play the piece of music. And that's a really good option for adding ambient sounds when you're playing in person so you can go online you can find sounds for creepy woods and for wind rustling through the trees for creaking doors all sorts of sound effects and drop them in as files as you go through your campaign so you might say the party go into an old abandoned house and you might have a little file for the sound of a creaking door and just little elements like that that you can drop in to improve the experience for your players. Another element that I find really handy to have is a section for mechanics. So what I like to do is have a section for mechanics so that I can include things like rules for gambling. My players do a lot of gambling and they do a lot of drinking. So I like to have specific rules for gambling and for drinking effects but one thing you can use this mechanics section for is for custom rules so I'll give you an example so early in my campaign I created a set of drinking rules and presently they exist within Microsoft Excel but I can paste them in here And with a little bit of formatting, I wouldn't necessarily paste them all in at once. And not necessarily in this layout, but a little bit of formatting, I can then have drinking rules. So anytime my players go into a drinking contest, which happens a lot more than you might think, I have the rules there and ready to go, and I can tell them here are the different alcohols that you'll be drinking here are the fortitude dcs for you to avoid becoming hangover or drunk or passing out and i have a whole bunch of different uh, mechanics that I have i have rules for drinking i have rules for narcotics i have rules for gambling odds uh, custom healing rules all of these would go in separate pages in the mechanics section so that if I wanted to know how long does a player, how much HP does a player recover if they've rested for 23 hours and they've been aided by another, I'd look at my healing rules and I'd be able to see exactly how much HP they'd recover. Another really useful way of using OneNote is as a GM screen. So what we'll do is we'll create a GM screen and then within this section we'd have pages for everything that you'd have on your GM screen. So one thing I always struggle with is actions and what specific actions count as what type of actions. So I'd create an actions page and then I would insert a table, let's say six across, and then create a whole bunch of actions. So let's just have a look at the official list of actions so I might go command word cast spell attack 
attack melee and then another all of those three are standard actions so I'd go through I'd make a table similar to how it's presented on the official gem screen listing all the actions and what kind of action they were so at a glance if one of my players said can i cast a spell and also draw a hidden weapon and i'd look and say those are two standard actions so no no you can't another thing that i would use my gm screen for is i'd create a page for dc checks so i'd use the official gm screen and i'd go through and pull all that information put it in here for what dc performance and actions is and that way when you're running your game you have one fewer piece of paper one fewer document open that you need to revert to if anyone says i want to kick in this door or i want to cut this door down with max you can come to your dc checks and you can look at what the difficulty class for kicking down a door is or cutting down a door is or the hardness of the door so that you can work all that out Another really handy thing to have in this GM screen is links. So let's say you've prepared a campaign and you've expected it to take four hours for them to get for your party to get through it, and they've been through it in two. And you've got nothing else prepared. So your party are traveling through the woods and you have you've got nothing. So you decide I want to do a random encounter. Well, here you can you, use several of the resources available online one is a great example is cobalt fight club so you might put cobalt fight club as an option and then copy the link to the website and insert a link there so that if your party is if you need to use a, a random encounter, you can go to Cobble Fight Club and really quickly build one that you know is going to be semi-balanced and you don't have to spend a lot of time doing it so it doesn't seem like you've not prepared anything. Um, you can also do the same for places and for websites like name generators, like a link to fantasy name generator. So if your players arrive in a town and you've only prepared the half of the town closest to where they arrive and they say i want to go on to the opposite side of the town and go to a pub there well you can go into the fantasy name generator get a name for the pub get a name for some of the patrons in there really quickly so you can have a link for that and i'll leave a bunch of useful generator type links down in the description below that i think you should include in your gm links page and finally what we'll do is we'll jump over into my full notebook so that you can see i've even used this notebook as a way to keep track of what i wanted to cover in this video and you can see here that i've shared this notebook with some redditors and i created a little introduction for them um, to get them used to it that's what prompted this video but i just want to give you a quick overview of how i've specifically gone about creating my OneNote campaign. So you can see here that I've got the players and you can see that I was playing with the layout of character sheets. So this was my old one all a little bit more separate, a little less polished. And then before the video I switched it over to this new style which is what I'll do for all my characters. But you can see that I've got the information for all of my characters. Uh, one handy little trick to note if you go to view and then click on this button here which is page width you can see all the information you'll have seen me do that a couple times in the video so if that's if you're wondering how I was doing that that is how and you can go in and it'll just set each page to its page view depending on your desktop size so you can see here that I've got all my characters set up so that should I need to I can look at any of their stats. I've got my world set up with my campaign map and I've added a variety of pins to different locations 
as well as various information. So, for example, one of our party's previous characters died, and when he died, he was given a choice by a devil to either be tormented for eternity or become the devil's herald and be granted new powers. He chose to be granted new powers and has now become a major NPC villain for the party who's been retracing their footsteps across the realm and assassinating people they knew, destroying areas and just generally making life miserable for them. So I've made a note of some of that. And you can see down here that's where the original character died. And there's a little note on the town and a pin on the town so you can click on it and it'll take you to the page for that city. My calendar, in the same way as I showed you in the previous section, is set up with the months and what the players have done. I'm not going to click on any of them because it's all spoilers for my party and I don't want them watching this and having things spoiled. But another thing I've done in my campaign, the country is separated into 17 baronies. So I've given the baronies a section and in each section, um, let's have a look, we'll click on Ashford. So Ashford is the barony my players are in at the minute. So it's got its own page. I know who the baron is, who their loyalties are towards a little description of the barony and their coat of arms as well and I've done that for all of the baronies just so that if at a glance I need to I can give the players some information if they ask um, oh who was the baron of iron hall again I know down the side because I've set it up using the subheadings I know James Young so I don't even have to click on it to tell them same with deities, I have a almost entirely custom pantheon, save for a small handful of the Pathfinder gods. And I have set it up so that I have their alignment in the title and their domains are pulled as the subtitle. So if I'm creating a new character with someone and they say I fancy being a cleric of protection, then I can look down this list and go, well, do you want to be good? And they might say yes. And I'll say, well, Ioma Day is a really good choice because one of her domains is protection. And that's a really handy thing to be able to do. My characters send quite a lot of letters, so I have an entire section devoted to them. You can see I have one for the party as a whole and one for a specific character because one of them sends a lot more letters than everyone else. And I just keep a track of the letters they've sent and the letters that they've received. You can see in my mechanics section I've got those drinking rules that you saw before that I've prettied up. So if I go to the page size I've prettied up the drinking rules, made them a little easier to digest. And same with some of my other rules. I haven't gone through a lot of these and prettied them up yet because I have been in the process of migrating all of my campaign information into OneNote to get it in there rather than to get it pretty so far. But you can see here that I've got an important NPC section and if you look I have added pages for some of the characters that the players have met frequently or who are large important NPCs. So for an example Bailey and Aster is the secret prince of the dead king who his driving the central conflict in this campaign uh, so he has a page and I've got his picture same with several of the other key characters I won't click on any of the others because there are a fair number of spoilers in those if you wanted to keep some of this information for your players because you can share this one note campaign with your players and they'll be able to look through the things you've written if you want to keep certain things from them all you need to do is right click on the section in that you want to keep hidden and click on password protection. Add password and then it will prompt you for a password. You just enter your password and then anytime you want to open that section and view it, you'll have to put the password in. So as long as you don't give the password to your players, they won't be able to open the section. You can keep things hidden from them. This is really good for notes. It's good for your calendars, important NPCs, and for game planning as well. But it allows you to share the world, the maps, their sheets with them, 
and certain other elements so that they can look through what you've written without having to get separate documents written to them. You only have to do one and share it with them, but you can keep certain things to yourself. But that's my overview of OneNote and how I use it for RPG campaign management. I really like this program. I don't claim to know everything about it yet. I've not been using it for a super long time, but it's been really helpful for my campaign planning. I love that it's free. I like that it's it's a Microsoft program, so I am used to using Microsoft programs, so I picked it up really quickly. I like that it's free. I like that I can in, insert pictures and audio files and I can directly insert PDFs as well if you click insert and file you get PDF printouts I like that you can add those elements in I like that it's cloud based it's synced to the Microsoft OneDrive so you will need a Microsoft email address to get the most out of this but you can get them for free and you get I think it's five gigabytes of free storage space in Microsoft OneDrive anyway but it's cloud based so I'm recording with my phone so I can't show you an example but I can draw things on my phone and they come up on the screen. I can make lists. I can type anything that I want on my phone and it updates on my OneNote almost immediately. It gives you a lot of flexibility and I really enjoy it as a program. And I think if you have been using Google Drive or nested folders on Windows Explorer, if you've got a binder filled with handwritten notes that you have to flick through for half an hour at a time just to find out the name of uh, an NPC that they met six weeks ago, give OneNote a try because you might find that it really improves your game mastering experience it makes things quicker and easier and if you lay it out in a sensible manner that works for you not necessarily the way I've done it because the way I've done it won't work for everyone but if you lay it out in a way that works for you you might just find that you fall in love with it like I have so that's all for this introduction video I would like to do some more in-depth videos using OneNote not necessarily showing you how to use it but for you to see how I go about creating things for my campaign if that's the sort of thing you'd like to see or if you have any questions or any videos you'd like to see on me creating running through a full campaign uh, adventure planning stage or how I would go about creating a new world anything like that leave them in the comments below and if this video is popular enough and does well enough then I'm going to be making a lot more because I love I love tabletop RPGs, I love D&D, and I love being a game master, so this is all stuff that I'm doing anyway, so it'd be nice to share it with the community. So don't forget, if you did enjoy this video, please leave a like so I can see how well received it is, and until next time, happy gaming. Greetings folks, just one last update. I know a lot of you would like to take a poke around in this OneNote file for yourselves. So if you're interested, I'll leave a link below for you to be able to send me your email address so that I can share this OneNote with you and you can take a look in detail at how I've gone about creating my campaign. Until next time, folks, happy gaming. Thanks for watching. If you're new here, don't forget to hit that subscribe button down below for new content every single Friday. And if you want to keep watching, well, there's another couple of videos for you to watch just over there. Happy gaming.